where do you, in these possible explanations to the Fermi paradox, why haven't we contacted aliens? Do you, yeah. do you land on? Well, I think the most straightforward explanation is that there aren't any. Now, there are many other explanations too, so I, you can't be dogmatic about things that are just sort of gut feel. But, you, you know, one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes, I don't know if you ever saw this one, where, you know, this alien civilization finally comes to planet Earth and, and gives us this book that they really want us to, to have and to hold, and it's in this foreign, you know, language you don't understand. It. The cryptographers, they desperately try to decipher it as humans are going to visit this other alien planet. And they're all sending back postcards, how wonderful it is and so forth. And they, they finally de decipher the title. It's to serve man. And everyone's so thrilled. Oh, they're here to serve us. It all makes sense. And then just as one of the final cryptographers is going on to the alien ship, his, his helper runs and says, I've deciphered the rest of the book. To serve man, it's a cookbook, you know. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so yeah. Is that is, is that a, <laughs> is that a possibility? Sure, you know. And and so, could they be watching us and just sort of waiting for us to uh, get to a, a mature enough level? I don't know. It strikes me. Well, you know, I think it'd be better to have this conversation after the James Webb Telescope. I mean, I do think that um, if we look at the atmospheres of many planets. I mean, there's now an estimate now that there's on order of one planet per star on average. So we've long known that, you know, the galaxy, hundreds of billions of stars, numbers of galaxies, hundreds of billions of galaxies. So we're talking about hundreds of billions of hundreds of billions of planets. Oh my, you know. And if we start to survey some of these planets and one after the other after the other, we just sort of find no evidence for any of the biological markers. It could be, of course, maybe life takes a, a radically different form. It'd be hard to know that. But I think, you know, that would at least give us some insight on the life question. But I just don't see how we get insight on the civilization or consciousness question without, you know, the direct connection. And, and it strikes me that if consciousness is ubiquitous, Let's say life is. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to grant that. If consciousness is also ubiquitous, then I don't understand why they haven't been here or why there hasn't been separate signature. Because presumably, they should be much further ahead of us. How unlikely would it be that we're like, of all consciousness in the universe, we're the most advanced. Mm -hmm. That would be such a special place for human beings that it's hard for me to grant that as a likely possibility. Rather, I think we're kind of running the mill. And there are many who are far more advanced than us. And I don't think that they would expend the energy to hide themselves. So, I don't so, think they care enough. And so, I, see, that's actually what I, I believe, that there's a, a very large number of civilizations that are far more advanced than us. But my sense is that humans are exceptionally limited, both in our direct sensory capabilities and our physics, our tools of, of sensing that just like with the string theory and the multiple dimensions, we're just not like, it's like, I honestly believe there could be stuff in front of our nose that we're just not seeing. We're, Cause we're too dumb, too, uh, too much hubris. And I mean, it's, it's a bunch of stuff and too ignorant as the, to, to, to the fabric of reality, all of those things. We're yeah. just, we're young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of intelligence. But I guess what I say is like I'm on board with all of that as a real possibility. But then it does strike me that we are sufficiently able to observe the unit. Look, we can look back to, you know, a fraction of the duration from here to the, just a fraction is left that we are unable to see. Mm -hmm. um, so, however young we are, we have been able to sort of pierce the universe and it just strikes me that there would be some signature, but maybe maybe that, that's coming. But, but look, having said that, I do, look, I, I, I certainly note the fact that it's rare that I stoop down while walking in Manhattan and sort of dig up some ants in the bushes on the side of the street and talk to the ants, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's just not interesting to me. So if we're like the ants on the cosmological landscape, then yeah, I can imagine that the super advanced aliens would be like, 
like who would ever, you know, but but I feel like we're sufficiently advanced that there should be some signal signature of that, but maybe it's coming. I think the deeper fundamental problem between us and the ants is that we don't have a common language. It's not it's not the interest. It's that we don't even have a common language. And so the the alien civilizations don't even know how to communicate. Like we humans have convinced ourselves we're special because we developed a language. And you, you talked about you talk about the importance of language yeah. to the intelligence, but it, it makes you wonder like how very niche is that fan, like club that we've like tribe we've created of language and linguistic type of systems that are very specific to our particular kinds of brains and we share ideas together. We're all super excited that we can understand the universe because we came up with some notation yeah. and math. I wonder if there's some totally other kinds of language that communicates on a different time scale with different, very different mechanisms in a space of information that just is not, it's sure. everything, everything is lost in translation. Yeah, and it could well be as a look, I mean, I think part of the reason I go toward the possibility of the soul intelligence is there's a certain kind of romantic appeal mm -hmm. to looking out in the cosmos and it's just quiet and it's just eternal silence. There's some there's something that appeals to me at an emotional level that way. But yeah, I mean, um, nobody nobody knows, and uh, it's certainly um, conceivable that we're, there's just a radical mismatch between the kinds of things that we are able to observe and sensitive to versus the kinds of structures that permeate the universe in a manner that simply we're unable to detect.